I feel like this video is just gonna be mostly like trying Fenty Beauty for the first time. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel, Accidental Beauty. If you're new, welcome, my name's Laura. I'm a self-top makeup enthusiast who absolutely loves trying out makeup, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be doing a full face of POC owned beauty brands. Like 98% of this video is gonna be first impressions, products that I've never tried before. A couple of them, I just didn't have any new products in that category, so I just used what I already have in my collection but I used POC owned brands for everything. I have tried something from all of these brands before, but not these particular products. You know, all of my opinions, completely my own. I'm gonna be completely open, honest, transparent. Uh, all of these products, except for I think one, I bought with my own money or they were samples that were included with my order from Sephora. So if you guys wanna hear all of that and see how I did this makeup look using all of those products, then please keep on watching. All right, let's jump in. I have tried a couple of these products already uh, because basically I don't have any new, new products, products that I haven't tried in certain categories, but almost everything else are products that I haven't tried before. Some of them are newer products. Actually, all of them are newer products. Some are, one or two are actually new products and everything else is older because I don't have the budget to just keep buying new releases. It's really, it's not sustainable for anyone except for like people who are already making money doing this as a career. Anyways, I'm not salty at all. So let's go ahead. I don't have a new primer. I don't think, oh, actually, oh, never mind. I do, I do have a new primer to, tr newer primer to try out. So I got this sample from Sephora, like probably last year. This is the Fenty Beauty uh, Pro Filter 101. Is that the name of the primer or what? I don't know. Anyways, I got this little sample pack. In here we have, uh, it says from normal to oily skin. Oh, that is so cool. On the side, we actually have a, I think full color spectrum of all of the Fenty Beauty foundation shades, I guess up until this point. Uh, do we have a date on here? Don't think we do, uh, but that's really cool. So you can actually see the full like gradation. Some of the shades, are really weird. I know that they have different undertones, but some of the shades, like the shade 120 over here, looks very dark compared to the other ones. I don't know, you probably won't even be able to see this. Let's see if I can go back here. Oh, that is so cool. They're actually, hmm, now I have to choose. There is the Pro Filter Soft Matte and the Pro Filter Hydrating formulas. And then we have the Soft Matte instant retouch primer to go along with the matte foundations and then the soft silk hydrating primer to go with the hydrating foundation. Part of me wants to do my face like split down the middle one and one, but I feel like the finish will be radically different. Looking at the shades, it looks like the hydrating one will be a little bit closer to my skin tone right now, my winter shade. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go with that because I feel like I have tried the matte foundation. I got a sample at one point and I have no idea what I did with it, uh, but I have tried it on in a Sephora before and I don't think I've actually tried the hydrating formula. I've heard mixed things about both of these formulas. So anyways, I'm gonna try out the hydrating one. It says for normal to dry skin, which is what I have. I do not have oily skin, which the soft matte is for normal to oily skin. So. Anyways, let's try that. So I'm gonna open it. They included pretty much like a light, um, couple medium shades and then a dark shade. They don't have a s deep shade in the sample pack, which is a little weird for Fenty. I feel like they would normally do like at least samplings from each kind of color on the spectrum, if that makes sense. Like kind of, you know, light, light, medium, 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 dark, dark and deep, but Okay, and this is what we're working with. So I'm just gonna use the first two. This one is the primer, and then this is the, the first shade, uh, which is shade 150, which looks pretty close to me. Okay, so it's a very like milky kind of texture. Feels very nice. 
Oh, it has a nice smell, actually. It's like a little perfumed. It smells a little bougie, which I'm not opposed to. So I think the idea with this primer is, like it feels like a moisturizer. So I think the point is to really, you know, make your skin feel hydrated, plump, moisturized. It's probably a dewy finish foundation, but this just adds, I don't know what's going on outside. Uh, this just adds that, that dewiness to your face. Although actually, I'm not getting that much shine. I'm getting a little bit of a glow. I actually really like the smell of this. Like I would consider picking this up because I actually really like the smell and the texture feels very nice. I'd almost describe it as velvety. It's not, it doesn't feel like I'm wearing moisturizer. Like it's not very heavy. It's already sunk into my skin, but it gives it a very nice velvet texture. I like that. Very curious to see how it wears under foundation or if it helps my foundation stay on better. I don't get typically too much separation when I'm wearing foundation. I've got like a dry patch going on over here. My skin is just not happy with the increased frequency that I've been wearing masks. I've been going into the office three times a week and wearing masks while I'm there and my skin is just not having it. So I've got like a little bit of a dry patch, like an eczema flare going on over here. Right now it just kind of bumps, but earlier it was flaky. And then typically I get creasing under my eyes, uh, sometimes around my smile lines, and sometimes on my forehead. So let's see how this foundation wears. It is hydrating, so I'm not sure if that means it's gonna move around a lot or if it'll kind of stay in place more. I'm not planning on setting it because I don't think I have a setting powder. So I just kind of want to see how it performs in general. I actually gave a really generous amount in the samples, although I have a feeling I'm only gonna get one use out of this. It doesn't really give you a lot of time to play around with it and see if you like it though, so not thrilled about that. Color match though. Oh, this dries quickly, okay. I'm gonna stop talking and just blend this in. I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I typically get separation on my nose with pretty much every foundation that I've ever worn. There are like one or two exceptions, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. The coverage seems pretty light, but it seems like kind of a light consistency. Just dip my brush into the little sample and I'm applying it in that way. Sort of like, I'm gonna try patting it in. Yeah, that seems to be working a bit better. I expected it to feel kind of wet on my skin and it it dries down i don't know if that's because i'm applying a thin layer because i don't have a ton of this product okay it's looking a little a little oily like a little shiny on my forehead i don't know if you can see it or if my lights are kind of toning that down I think I'm gonna leave it at that. It's starting to look like it'll get cakey if I apply any more. I'm just gonna add a little bit down on my chin. And yeah, you can see this little eczema bump over here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can see it in person. And just like the primer, I used about half of the foundation sample, so not too shabby. So it's drying down, it feels Tacky isn't the right word, but I definitely feel the product on my face. Like it feels very plump, very, I never use this word, but like lush, like very hydrated feeling and a really, really pretty glow. Coverage wise, it's like a light medium. This might be more of like an everyday foundation for me because it's very nice. I typically like a little bit more like coverage and smoothing personally. Very, very nice so far. I am pleased. Okay, so next I actually ordered the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer in the shade 130, which I think 130, 150. Okay, 150 is the shade of the foundation. So this is, I guess, two shades lighter. Um, one, two, three shades lighter. 
based on this little chart from the samples. So let's try it out and see. I know this product is like, I think one of their first products that they launched. So it's an older product. Ooh, it's, it's light. Anyways, let's try it out. Oh, I didn't smell the foundation actually. I always like to smell my products. I don't know why. It smells like foundation. Okay, so I guess it's not scented, but the primer is scented. Primer is absolutely lovely. I would definitely consider buying it like just for the smell. I don't know, I like a full experience with a product. Ooh, that's leaking out. Uh, I like the full experience with a product and typically I don't love the idea of scented products because when you add fragrances, it can, you know, cause skin irritation and stuff. My skin's pretty sensitive and sometimes I'm just sensitive in general to smells, but this is very soft and very like natural smelling. It's not too harsh. So I appreciate that. All right. So let's try out this concealer. It looks very light. This smells like paint. Uh, we've got like a flat doe foot, which is interesting. Um, okay, let's try it out. Ooh, it's very thick. It's a thinner formula than Tarte Shape Tape. That's just like very heavy and thick. It is still, let's just touch it. Yeah, it's got that like full coverage feeling. Instant photo soft coverage for all long wear, soft as air, crease proof. Let's let's see let's see if it's crease proof feels very nice on the skin this is a little bit light for me i'd probably go maybe a shade or two darker i like a really brightening concealer under my eyes blends out nicely it is a little bit dry feeling wouldn't say cakey but it's got that very like matte look very very pretty though but i'll just add a little bit more I have been trying to apply my concealer a little bit differently so it shears it out and then it's less likely to crease. Yeah, this is definitely not full coverage. Wow. I don't know if I've encountered a concealer that isn't full coverage and I don't know how to feel. Uh, this is also, as I mentioned, a little bit too bright. Uh, so I'm going to have to really warm up my face with my complexion products yeah i i wish there was more coverage in this i don't i mm. okay i'm gonna try one more time i don't want to overdo the products it just seems like every time i blend it out it just disappears fortunately i don't have a darker shade it's it's too bright for me and it's like bunching up over here really weirdly okay i think i have like a dry skin patch or something well, not anymore. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't know what to think about this concealer, but we're gonna move ahead. I guess at this point I should do my eyebrows. Typically I do my eyebrows first, but kind of forgot. Unfortunately, I don't have a new eyebrow product, but I am gonna be using this one called the Speedy Eyebrow Pencil from Peripera. I got this from YesStyle. They very kindly gifted it to me um, and it is a Korean brand so is owned by people of color so I'll just kind of breeze through this because it's not really part of the like first impressions section. I always forget that on camera these end up looking a little bit warm toned but the rest of my face is going to end up being pretty warm toned so I'm going to leave it. Um, so far I've got a crease happening under my eyes. Granted, it could be from layering on so much concealer, but all right, let's work on complexion because why not? I've got another Fenty product to try out. This is the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit. This is the packaging. This came out like a couple years ago now. Ooh, very nice packaging, this Rihanna. Ooh, wow, look at the size. That I've already gotten my fingerprints all over this, but look at the size of this. This is huge. I remember people saying that the bronzers were massive and then the blushes were tiny. I didn't end up picking up a blush because people were saying it's so small. Okay, ooh, very pretty. So this is the color. I think this will be really, really nice. 
I am moving into using more cream products. I really like the way that they feel. Of course, wearing a mask, they have to be long lasting. So that is a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but we're not talking about masks today. But I'm gonna use this e.l.f. brush and I'm gonna try and apply this. I feel like there's gotta be a better way to apply this. Okay, I'm just gonna dip my whole brush in here. Just get it really, really saturated. Ooh, this is a really nice color. Yes, very much a fan. Oh, this is perfect. It's like a really nice kind of contour shade. Oh, this is lovely. I am so disappointed with myself that I haven't tried this sooner because I've actually been sitting on most of these products for a while now. And I just haven't had time to sit down and film this whole video. Cause like, I really want to take my time. I want to enjoy the product. This is lovely. This is easy to use. It blends out like a dream. Oh, this is wonderful. This is so wonderful. I love this. I remember people were raving about this when it came out, which is why I picked it up. And uh, I gotta get better about filming things on time when I actually pick up relevant products. Oh, okay, better not touch it because it looks like it does come off kind of easily. I really suck when it comes to contouring or bronzing, I guess I'm okay at, but contouring, just getting like the right angle to really sculpt your face. I'm not good at it. I'm getting better. I'm just, you know, trying to practice. Okay, it is, something is sticking to a dry patch I didn't know I had. Okay, yeah, see, I'm touching it right now and it's going away. And something is really sticking to these dry patches. Looks like the foundation is just sticking to it and is not nice. So let me... Let me just redo this contour over here. Editing me here. So I've been trying out this product for a while and I would definitely use a different brush to contour. So this is the type of brush that I normally use to contour. It's like sort of a domed brush, I guess. This one's from Morphe. I got it in a complexion product set. Basically any type of brush that looks like this, that's what I would recommend. I would recommend something that's smaller than, you know, like a powder brush for your whole face. You want something a little bit smaller, a little bit more detailed. This is the type of brush that I use for just like powder contour. And I find it actually works really well for this cream product, which I was surprised about. So you can see that this type of brush just works really nicely for stippling, for blending out. It's just like for my face size, it's just kind of the perfect size. But yeah, I, I don't think I would recommend that e.l.f. brush. Maybe to initially apply it, but then I would use something like this to blend it out after. I try and avoid the e.l.f. brush with this product because every time I use it, it seems to disrupt my foundation underneath, like what happens in the video. I try and touch this product as little as possible because I don't know if this is a thing with cream makeup or this particular product, or maybe just the way that I apply products it really has a tendency to disrupt your foundation or whatever you're wearing underneath. So that's why I like a softer brush like this. You can really just sort of tap it in lightly, blend it out softly, uh, and then you're usually good. I think I mentioned in the video that I'm not really strong in contouring. I'm trying to get better, but this brush, this type of brush really helps me just get the right like shape, the right position, blending it out properly, all of that. Also, one more thing I'll add because inevitably I'm gonna get some annoying comment about it. I'm aware that the shade is too warm to be considered contour. Really, I probably should have picked up the shade Amber, I think it's called, to contour the lightest shade from these cream bronzers. And I really regret not picking up that shade. I think that one actually would have been the perfect contour for me. And I feel like the only reason why I didn't pick it up was I thought that I had something that cool already in my collection, but it turns out I like sort of do, but it's not quite as cool. I think that one might've been a little bit better for me. That being said, the shade Butter Biscuit that I try out in this video, it does work nicely as a contour. It is a little, a little warm though. So it was kind of like, I personally would consider it kind of like a contour bronzer hybrid on me. I feel like I can kind of make it work for both. 
especially in the summer right now like my lights are really washing me out and I've got natural light coming in so I do look extra pasty today uh, and I am filming this months after I filmed the first part Anyways, this is actually really easy to use. The brush I'm using, it's not my favorite brush, but it's kind of my go-to for this type of formula and it's actually working really nicely. Okay, let's do a little bit under my jaw. I feel like I'm just gonna look muddy. I don't really know how to do this jawline contouring. Actually, I think I'm supposed to be lower so that you don't actually see the product. Did that do anything? I feel like I'm going to be editing this later and I'm just going to see like a brown line underneath my jaw. Because it's a cream product, it's actually really easy to tone it down. Like if you, if you overdid it, cream moves around and I assume eventually it completely dries, but you do have more time to work with so you can really like move it around to where you want. So I really like that. Okay, I need to stop playing with this. Now I've like disrupted all my foundation down here. I've lost my coverage. Okay, hold on, I need to re reapply. Um, I actually would have been happy if this product was even more cool toned. I don't love that these products don't seem to be staying in place. I know I just said that I like to be able to move things around, but Something like foundation, I kind of want it to like, you know, stay where I put it. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm loving the foundation. You know what, I've got these like patches happening and on camera it looks okay. In person, the foundation is sticking to those dry patches. And then when I add the um, cream bronzer over top, it just kind of sticks there and it's just making the whole thing look ashy. So I should probably stop touching it. I think that's my cue. Next, we're gonna briefly step away from Fenty. Uh, I actually ordered a whole bunch of stuff from Sephora for their VIB sale, their fall VIB sale, right before Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I got one of the Melt Cream Blush Lights. I'm so excited. The packaging is beautiful. We've got like this nice embossing. I really wanted to try these out when they first launched and they're not cheap. Oh, okay, they're 29 bucks, which I got 15% off for the VIB sale. I wasn't sure what shade to get. I wasn't sure if I would like the texture because I'm very, very particular when it comes to blushes, especially cream blushes. I have like a particular texture that I'm trying to replicate, whatever. Long story, uh, what, my favorite blush has been discontinued and I think I'm just trying, like subconsciously, I'm trying to find something to replace it. But I've heard pretty good things about this and I keep coming back to it. I keep adding it to my cart and then taking it out and then adding it back in. And uh, I finally decided to go for it. I figured might as well, it's on sale. So I got the shade Polished. I'm hoping it'll be this nice kind of peachy color. And I think it's supposed to have a little bit of like a sparkle or something. I really like sparkly duochrome blushes. Let's open it up and see. So. Those of you who don't know, Melt is co-owned. Uh, they've got two owners. One of their owners is Mexican American. So, ooh, okay. So this is what it looks like. Very pretty. This is like my perfect shade of blush. I love this. It's got a nice mirror as well. And let, oh, oh, this is very like balmy feeling. And yes, we've got like a nice sort of sheen to it. I don't know if I'd call it like a duochrome, but there are little sparkle particles in here. Very, very like glossy looking. I love this. So I'm just going to apply this using my fingers because I feel like a brush or a sponge might dilute it. And this is probably how I'd apply something like this. Oh, yes. Yes. <gasps> Oh, it's so pretty. It's like duochrome a little bit. Oh yes, this is, this is my kind of blush. So unfortunately you lose some of that like shimmer, but it is very, like they call it a blush light. It's supposed to be like a blush highlight hybrid scenario. Oh, and it gives you that really nice like sort of reflective sheen. I don't know how else to describe it. Oh, this is so pretty. 
I'm probably gonna end up going overboard with the blush, but that is okay. And I'm gonna sort of blend it into my contour so it will cover up some of the, like the fact that it's like sticking to some patches of skin. Hmm, it's almost got a little bit of a like vanilla-y scent, which I don't mind. Oh, this is so pretty. I love this. We're gonna do a little bit of draping, I guess, today. So I'll just bring it right to my eyes. Wow, my eyes are very veiny today. Oh, this is so pretty. It's like so dewy looking. If you look very, 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 very close up, you can see a little bit of shimmer, but it's like very, very fine particles. So it kind of gives you more of that glow from within kind of, kind of situation. So not what I was expecting, but I'm pleasantly surprised and also very, very easy to work with, very beginner friendly. Thing about products like this is it shears out pretty easily. So if you're kind of intimidated by, you know, really bold blush, I don't think you'll have that problem with this. And it is buildable. So, you know, if you're like me and you like really dramatic blush, then uh, I think this works for kind of everyone. You can kind of customize it however you like. Oh, this is such a pretty color. Yeah, this foundation is just like sticking to random patches. Not a fan, but oh, this is so nice. Oh, we got, we still got some like sculpting happening. I am, oh, this is magnetic. I forgot that everything Melt does is magnetic. Okay. Cool, and the color on here, I know some people are like very, very picky about this. I'd say the color on the sticker pretty closely matches the color of the product. So that's always nice. Um, okay, next. I guess we're kind of almost done because there's not a whole lot to this look. I don't have a new highlighter to try out. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna dip into my Ace Boutte Flare palette. I'm gonna use the shade Biscotti up here. And just kind of lightly tap that on, just so that we've got like a little bit of extra glow, especially since this look is like all cream products. I just want, I want that glow to shine through. Let's go back into the contour and I'm just gonna use the edge of my brush. I know this brush is too big. I just don't have anything smaller that I think will work with a cream product. Okay, I'm just gonna blend this out real quick with my fingers. The nice thing about working with cream products, uh, kind of like what I was saying before, is if you mess up, you can just kind of like smudge it around and like even just kind of take it off for a little less intense just by tapping at it. I know this brush is way too big for nose contour. Don't have anything else. Just put a little bit at the very end and then at the top. Okay, let's do some mascara. I got a mini size of the Fenty. Now we're back to Fenty. The Fenty Full Frontal Volume Curl and Volume Lift and Curl Mascara. Okay, I'm just gonna curl my lashes. So let's see, let's see, Miss Fenty. Ooh, oh, it's a big wand. Looks something like that. Before I do that, I am such a mess. I'm actually gonna put on some eyeliner. Uh, again, I don't have a new eyeliner, so I'm just gonna use the One Size Point Made 24 Hour Liquid Eyeliner Pen in the shade Bodacious Black. And this is Patrick Starr's brand, and he is Filipino American. I actually really like this eyeliner. I This is my daily eyeliner. It's quite nice. I'm already starting to get some creasing on the uh, blush draping situation on my eyes. That is completely to be expected for this type of product. I'd probably use uh, the NYX Glitter Primer if I was actually gonna be wearing this all day just to try and prevent creasing. I'm like incapable of drawing even wings. It's like not even the same country. Anyways, as I was saying, Miss Fenty, let's try out your mascara. So the wand looks like this. 
very very nice it's like flat and also very like oval shaped lots of bristles very excited to try this out Ooh, wow this is a nice mascara this brush is so comfortable to use i don't like those very like hard plastic brushes they get really irritating on the eyes oh this is quite lovely like so this is no product compared to product obviously you just saw me put that on so i'm just gonna turn sideways i don't know if you can see my lashes very very nice i am a big fan beautiful beautiful i love this this is such a lovely mascara really really big fan oh look at that look at that volume that lift it is everything that it promised to be and more i love it like look at that volume yes ma'am beautiful i don't know if it's showing up on camera because i feel like my lashes always disappear on camera you can definitely see these wings but i feel like you really can't see my lashes but i'm not gonna be putting on false lashes for this video because it's all about these products I just really want to focus on them next i'm going to be trying the very famous gloss bomb cream color drip lip cream i think i actually got this as a gift if i remember correctly i don't think i actually bought this because this is very much not my normal type of product i have the shade cookie jar uh okay let's just open it up and see Ooh, oh oh sort of gingery color do we have a smell oh this is very goopy it smells like paint okay Ooh, very nice they were not kidding this is so glossy it's very comfortable like it's very hydrating but it does feel like i'm wearing a layer of gloss I always say gloss really weirdly. I feel like I say it like gloss. It's pretty. Ugh. It's got like a funny kind of taste. Like I know obviously you're not supposed to eat this, but like inevitably you get some in your mouth. It sounded dirty. It's very nice. It's just not my, it's not a product that I would wear day to day but this would be really nice for the winter because like it's really like it's pretty much fully opaque color or almost fully opaque color very comfortable to wear it's not going to dry out your lips you just obviously can't wear this under a mask or something uh okay and then just to finish up i'm going to use the Tatcha luminous dewy skin mist i have a mini size of that and let's see if i can make myself look more dewy Tatcha has like the most beautiful packaging. Am I supposed to? Okay, for normal to dry skin, shake gently. Miss two to three spritzes onto face for a boost of hydration and glow under or over makeup. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake it gently. Okay. Oh, this is, this is luxury feeling. I am not classy enough to use this. Hmm. Okay, it has the same smell as their Silk Canvas Primer. And did that really do anything? I'm going to spritz a little bit more. Okay, it's definitely on my skin. I can feel it. I guess it did a little bit. Let's do a little bit more. I'm not sure if this really did anything, to be completely honest. Anyways... I'm just going to put on my wig, show you the final look, and then I'll do a full product rundown. We can talk about everything. So give me one sec and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This is the final look.
Okay, let's do a rundown of everything that I tried. I'm gonna try and go in order. So first off, the Pro Filter Hydrating Primer, lovely. I really enjoyed it. It was very comfortable to wear and I really liked the smell of it also. As far as like, I guess, efficacy, I don't really know how much it actually did. It was very nice to wear. My skin did feel a little irritated in areas where I had like open skin, like those dry patches that I was talking about throughout the video. Like, I don't know how well this worked as an actual primer, but it was nice. So I give it, I give it a five out of five, but I don't really know like how much it actually did, if that makes sense. Like it was nice. Maybe it added some hydration or shine. I don't really know, but I'm gonna give it a five out of five because it felt nice. Uh, the foundation, not a huge fan. Is it the worst foundation I've ever tried? Absolutely not. It looks like whatever is on my nose right now is still intact. I've got a little bit of creasing that seems to be happening around my smile lines, like the tiniest bit of creasing on my forehead. I'm gonna give it a four out of five because it's not awful. Like it was sticking to my dry patches and looked really unflattering. It did kind of emphasize some texture and stuff. Yeah, didn't really love that. I'm sure if I set it down with powder, it probably would have been fine, but I just wanted to see how it performed on its own. Uh, the concealer, it's okay. It's really not my favorite formula. It said it was crease proof. I am getting some creasing under my eyes, like the tiniest of bits on my like crow's feet on this side, but not on this side, which is interesting. I don't love that it's not full coverage, although it doesn't claim to be, so I can't take points off there. It's just, I don't know, it's like thin, but thick at the same time. Also, as I mentioned, I would go for a lighter shade. The concealer's okay. I think I give it a four out of five as well. It's just really not my favorite formula and I don't think I would pick this up again. Uh, same goes with the foundation. I'm glad I only got a sample. And the primer, like I would like wearing that under makeup just for the smell, but I don't know if it's the type of primer that works for my needs or the sort of intended look of you know the, my complexion overall when I'm done my makeup. So I don't think I would buy the primer, but it is very nice. Brows, I've already tried that product before. You can actually watch my review over here. Then I did the cream bronzer contour scenario. Looks like it's still there. I really like this. I did need to build it up, but it was very easy to use, very quick to use. I give it a solid 11 out of five. Very, very happy with it. And then the Melt Blush Light is very, very pretty. Still very, very like glowy looking. If I touch it, does it transfer? It does transfer. Okay, so this definitely isn't something that I'd probably be able to wear under a mask. Or if I did, it would probably transfer, which is a bit of a shame because it's absolutely beautiful. It's so radiant looking. I don't know if I call it a blush light. I think it's a radiant blush, but I don't think it has enough shimmer or light reflecting particles to consider it a blush highlight hybrid. Editing me here again. So I just wanted to add my final thoughts about the Melt Blush Light since I have been trying it out for several months now. Okay, it's beautiful. I love it. It smells amazing. However, it often dissolves the makeup that you're wearing underneath after about eight hours or so. So if I'm wearing it with no products underneath, it's totally fine. Like if you don't wear foundation or much concealer, you'll probably be fine. But I've just found that it, it literally like melts, huh? It melts away my makeup and it leaves like little dots of makeup behind, like almost like between my pores or whatever. It looks really bad. But the other day I tried setting it with a powder blush. So I set it with NARS Orgasm because it's sort of a similar looking product. It's not the same, but it's sort of similar when the two of them are layered together. So it still keeps the same effect and it adds that golden highlight reflect that you've got in NARS Orgasm, which works really nicely with the shade Polished that I try out in the video. 
And that is actually, that combo is actually able to keep it in place all day. It doesn't move, it doesn't melt, it doesn't dissolve. And the two shades actually work really, really nicely together. So I would definitely recommend doing something like that, especially if you're wearing a heavier foundation underneath and you really don't want it to move, you're, uh, you need your makeup to last all day. I really would recommend setting it. So let me just show you. Um, so just to compare, because why not? So we got Melt Polished and we have NARS Orgasm. It's funny because they really don't look similar at all, but the two of them layered on top of each other actually complement each other really well. So that is my recommendation, but it's beautiful. I give it a solid five out of five. I'm really happy with it. Can't wait to wear it some more. Also performed really easily, blended out beautifully, very beginner friendly, very easy to use, very quick to use love it next i think i tried the gloss bomb no i tried the mascara next right i really like it it's really really nice i feel like it's not showing up at all on camera but in person it's a really really beautiful lengthening volumizing formula it's so pretty i give it also a solid five out of five very very happy with it and then this gloss seems to be actually moving around quite a bit, which I guess is kind of normal for gloss. If you like a very, very shiny gloss, this is the perfect product for you. This is really not something that I would ever wear. As I mentioned, I got it as a gift, very grateful for it, but really not something that I would wear. I was worried that it would transfer to my teeth, so I'm actually really pleased to see that it does not seem to have done that. And often that's something that lip gloss does, I am tasting it a lot in my mouth and I'm not happy about that. I think that's just kind of the nature of this type of product. It moves around, it's very slippery, but you know, the coverage is really nice. Like I don't have anything bad to say about it other than the fact that it's not a product I normally reach for, but I give it a solid five out of five. Like it's, it's a really nice product. If you like lip gloss, this is definitely, this is a good one. And it's also not sticky, you know, I'm not gonna pretend like, you know, the wind's blowing and my hair gets caught in it. So it doesn't feel like your hair will get like stuck per se. It's like very emollient. Oh, and then the uh, the Taksha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. It's fine. I am seeing a bit more like luminosity, a bit more glow, especially on the side, actually. It's fine. I don't think I would purchase this again. I don't feel like it really did all that much. Unfortunately, this is for the lightest of light coverage makeup or, you know, not wearing any complexion products and you just kind of want to add a little bit of a glow to your face. I think this is that type of product. I really don't know if it did anything, which is a shame. The packaging is always so pretty and I really love the, uh, the silk canvas primer. So it's a shame that this didn't work out. Okay, so I switched to my phone because I just wanted to show you how this looks under oh and i switched up my lipstick i was filming something else um but as i was kind of taking everything down uh from my like set and everything i looked in a different mirror without my studio lights on they're on right now uh and actually my skin looks so much more luminous than i think it was showing up on camera so i just wanted to include that here so looking at my cheeks because that's where i applied most of the taksha like setting mist, setting spray. Uh, I think it did actually add a lot of dewiness. If anything, I look a little oily, which is very rare for me. And then my forehead looks dewy, but not as dewy. So I think the cheeks are more representative of the Taksha spray and then the forehead and my chin and whatnot are more indicative of the foundation and primer. Uh, yeah, this is actually a really pretty finish. But overall, I'm really, really happy with these products. I know it's like 90% Fenty, but I really had fun trying out all of them. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below what you think, if you have any feedback, any questions, I don't know, just feel free to comment below and I'm happy to discuss anything makeup related with you. If you like the type of looks that I do here on my channel and you wanna see more, I typically do like more out there, bold, dramatic looks. 
So if that's your thing, I'm sure you'll enjoy the content that I post on my other social media, and I've got links in the description box below, so you can just follow those directly there. I would love it if you could follow me and just check out my content, engage with it. That just really helps me grow as a creator. And if you enjoy the content that I post here on my channel and you wanna see more, I'd love it if you could subscribe and turn on notifications, and that way you'll get updated every time I post a new video, and I'll see you guys next time.